What's up, you guys? Your boy Ben Mahari here, representing Mahari Nation Sports Podcast. Uh, much love to the entire LDBC and the entire uh, basketball community. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and just get to the chase, though, guys. Um, as we look back on this day today, on January 26, 2021, this is the one year anniversary of the death of Kobe Bean Bryant. And it's unbelievable to think about it now that we've already been past one year on that day when he tragically died along with his daughter Gianna and along with his other passengers in that helicopter crash out in, in Calabas, California, uh, one year ago. And it just doesn't seem real. You know, as I, as I woke up this morning, um, I basically woke up and just, you know, was going through along my day. And then I recognized that, oh my God, today is January 26th. And Right now, Kobe could have was supposed to be forty two should would be at forty two years of age, living his life, teaching his uh, daughter Gianna how to play the game of basketball. And he was at peace with his life. You know, he pretty much accomplished everything that he ever wanted to do on the basketball court. You know. And when you look back at his career, you could say he's probably he's in the, he's definitely top five or top three, depending on what your criteria of the list is. I have him top three, you know, with Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron, you know, in my view. But you know, it's just it's very sad to see. This was a man that you know took a chance on himself at the age of seven, at the age of seventeen, coming out of high school, and he had every opportunity to pretty much be a bust and, and and pretty much fail. But coming from his basketball background, his pedigree, you had the sense that this kid was going to be something special. And to see him evolve into one of the all-time greats to ever play the game, it was just a phenomenal thing to watch. He was part of my childhood, no doubt about it. Um, I remember uh, the first time watching him play, um, it was during the 1998 All-Star Game in New York City in Madison Square Garden. Um, it was on NBC at the time. And we was watching the game. And my mom was pretty much asking the question, you know, to me, like, who was this purple guy? Who's the guy wearing the purple jersey? Because I don't think she'd ever seen a purple jersey like that before or something into the complexion of that. And when he heard – when she heard the name – heard Bob Costas mention the name of Kobe Bryant – that's how we got to know him and to see him, you know, perform on the big stage at Madison Square Garden at the age of 19. Remember, he was only this was his second year in the league and this was his first ever start in the NBA. And for him, he put on a magnificent show by, you know, with 360 jams, alley-oop dunks, you know, fadeaway jumpers, you know, behind the back moves. You know, this was a kid that was ready to take the torch from Michael Jordan. Even though there was many people that felt that there was nobody that was going to be greater than Jordan, you could tell that from every year that he got better, his game evolved and he kept, you know, changing, adapting his game, and he became, you know, a Jordan-like type of player later on in his career. Obviously, he won, you know, the championships. He won five titles, um, three in a row with Shaquille O'Neal. And about that, I think that looking back at that period of time, if there's one thing that I think Shaq would have probably would have taken back more than anything was that he should have, you know, revered more to Kobe during the during their heyday together. Because, you know, a, a light of all the things that those guys went through at the time, um, the one thing I think Shaq could take would want to take back more than anything was that he didn't revere Kobe Bryant as much as he should have. If those two guys were a collective force off the floor as they were on the court, there's no doubt they could have won at least four or five more champion, five championships during that run because nobody in that period of time in the early 2000s could touch him. You know, Shaq with his MVP caliber year, you know, and then Kobe, you know, growing himself into being one of the most complete players in the game, pretty much taking over the NBA by the throat and pretty much held, in it, held, held the crown down for three straight years. They made four NBA Finals appearances in three four NBA Finals appearances during that period and won three championships. I mean, that's that's a pretty impressive accomplishment. And when Shaq was traded to Miami and after Kobe went through the, you know, the ridiculous, you know, sexual assault case that was just completely bogus, you know, his reputation did took a hit. And 
you know, one thing that Kobe revered more than anything was that he didn't mind being the villain. He didn't mind people, you know, hating on him because he fed off of people's, off of the fans, off of the opposition's hatred of him because that made him motivated to play even better. And I remember those nights, I remember the night when he scored 81 points when he was pretty much dropping buckets left and right and Sam Mitchell was pretty much complex and confused of what to figure out what to do. I mean, it was just unbelievable to score that many points in one game. And you will you probably will never, ever see that for, for a while. Um, that was pretty much closest to anyone breaking Will Chamberlain's 100-point uh, uh, record that he set back in the in the 50s. Um, you know, Kobe Bryant came back in the in, back in the late 2000s to win two more NBA championships. Sebastian, you know, Shaq to win five championships, and eventually, you know, his career, you know, you know, went into the sunset. You know, I know I knew that the, he wanted to win another championship to match Jordan with six. If the NBA didn't decline, you know, the Chris Paul trade, I bet you they would have won at least one more championship before it was all said and done. But eventually he retired and went on and moved on to being a, you know, a movie producer and, and won an Oscar award for one of his movies. Um, great movie, too. And it was like he was moving. He pretty much was at peace with his basketball life. And he was teaching his daughter Gianna how to play the game. If you ever watched, you know, some of his some of her tapes, she was playing exactly like her father. You could tell that she was ready to take the torch from her from her father and held on to that spirit. And that day, man, they were traveling, you know, basically, you know, from from one of Gianna's games, and then, you know, the weather was bad, and basically the helicopter crashed. I'm not. I'm not gonna put no blame or anything like that. I'm. Just, I know people that have been basically playing with the pilot and everything else. I'm. I'm not gonna do that. It, it's. It's not appropriate to do. To you know, bash on anybody. I will not participate in that. But the point is, you know, this man, you know, was revered all around the world. I remember when when his death was announced. That literally Super Bowl week uh, was pretty much a tribute to Kobe Bryant. Everybody was in shock. If you weren't a sports fan, if you knew who Kobe Bryant was, you would be in shock as well. And when I was received the news, I was, you know, sitting at home, you know, just chilling until I got the TMZ report talking about, you know, the about the helicopter crash. I thought it was just fake. Then CNN came out with the news. Then then eventually NBC, ESPN, eventually all the top major news networks caught the story. And it was just shocking. I mean, it was just, it was shocking. I'd never seen L.A., you know, just in mourning of one of their great heroes pretty much in a long time. It was, re- it was really that, you know, it, rats, it was really that surreal. I remember calling one of my cousins who, li- who lived in the L.A. area. He pretty much would, would send pictures to me and show me the, a lot of the, you know, the, the funeral spots, even, even the ones in cl- close to Staples Center. I mean, it was just unbelievable, you know. It's sad, man. You know, this is a guy that should be living his life, you know, still married to Vanessa, you know, taking care of his, his daughters. Because I can tell you right now that her do- his daughters are going to be very smart people. I promise you that. He should be alive right now, you know, teaching his daughter Gianna basketball. And she was very close to going to Connecticut and taking her game and her and her IQ and also her education to the next level. This, this, all those things were supposed to happen. And, you know, I guess the problem for me would be just, you know, the realization that he's gone. I mean, it's going to take a long time for me just to accept the fact that, you know what, the man's gone. There's nothing we can do about it. It just doesn't seem real to me. It felt, it feels like I'm in a fantasy land in a, in a sense, you know, looking back on the whole thing. But, you know, the fact that you have to look on your on your on Wikipedia and see that he died on this specific date of January twenty sixth, twenty twenty. I mean, there's you, you there's, there's you can't erase that. It's pretty much rec- on record, and it it will, it will never be forgotten. You know, and it's just tough. It's really really tough. And but the only thing we could do now at this point is just you know keep watching his tapes. You know, wear his jerseys with pride. You know, represent him, you know, take a lot of the valued lessons that we watched on and off the court and apply that to our own lives. This was a guy that, pers- that pursued excellence 
at every aspect of his life. And that is something I'm pursuing in my life. And I hope you guys do the same as, you know, Kobe did during his life. I mean, there are only certain sports vehicles that really impacted our lives. And there are few and far between. Muhammad Ali was pretty much one of them. Michael Jordan, absolutely. Right up there. When you look back at the his back at the history of times of great sports figures that really impacted our lives in more ways than one, there's no doubt in my mind. Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, and also Kobe Bryant were the three main athletes in my view that really impacted everybody globally. And there's no denying that this man is gonna go down as one of the as one of the sports all time greatest you know, uh, heroes, you know, we've seen, you know, gr other great sports heroes, you know, die very, very young guys like Lombardo Clemente, um, Thurman Munson, uh, Dale Earnhardt senior when he died at the Daytona 500 in 2001. But I don't think all those, you know, that's no disrespect to them can only can ever match what happened that day when it came to Kobe Bryant. Um, it's very, very sad to, you know, talk about this even today, but we're going to be looking back 10 years from now, and we're still going to be talking about it. 20 years from now, we're still going to be talking about it. I mean, this is going to be something that's going to forever be talked about for generations to come, even when this world comes to an end, because he was that man. He was the, one of the great alpha basketball players of all time. This was a guy that pursued, you know, championship excellence on and off the court and he made his teammates hell and sometimes he and most times he made his teammates better but the whole purpose was was to pursue excellence everywhere and there's no denying that the players that played with him knew how special he was so at the end of the day man you know r.i.p to kobe bryant gianna and the other seven other passengers that credit that uh, pat that tragically died on that day um you know, condolences to, you know, Vanessa and his daughter and his daughters, you know what I'm saying? Um, I know that they've been living with this for about a year and it still has to be hard on them too. you know, condolences to, you know, Kobe's parents for doing an excellent job of raising, a, you know, a fine young man. And, you know, a man that now is going to go down as one of the all time greatest basketball players that will ever grace on the basketball court, but also one of sports greatest heroes. And certainly he will never, ever be forgotten. He may be gone from this earth, but the memories that, that he's created for all of us and the life lessons that he's instilled upon us can never, ever be replaced and it will never, ever be forgotten. So that's just my two cents on the whole, you know, day. It's still, one, it's still hard to accept the fact that he's gone, but, you know, God, you know, always has a plan for everybody. And just like what Shannon Sharp said last year when he talked about what his grandmother said to him, you can miss all the appointments in the world, but there is one appointment that you cannot miss, and that is from the man upstairs. So, and that's so prophetically true. Absolutely. So, you let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, RIP to Kobe Bryant, Gianna, and all those passengers that died on that helicopter crash in the Cal Las California on January 26, uh, 2020. Much love to the entire LDBC and the entire community. RIP to all those people, Gianna and also Kobe Bean Bryant.